Did the Mariners draft another Adam Frazier last night? Should fans be worried about a post-All-Star break hangover? And should Seattle let Ty France play in the All-Star game? We'll tell you our thoughts on today's episode of Locked On Mariners. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Blue Nile. Make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Mariners listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. Use promo code Locked On at checkout. It is Monday, July 18th, 2022. And thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms. I am your host, Tidy Gonzalez, joined as always by my co-host, Colby Petno. We cover the Mariners over at InsideTheMariners.com. For Fan Nation over on the Sports Illustrated Network, be sure to follow the show on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. Follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's D-A-N-E, G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at C Pat. 11, that's CPAT11. Be sure to also check out our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash control the zone. We post two additional podcasts on there every single week. Again, that is patreon.com forward slash control the zone. And if this is your first time joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast, welcome to the show. If you like what you hear, give us a follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it we are now at 1900 subscribers on youtube the last time that i checked again remember our goal for the end of the month is 2k and we have an even bigger goal of 2411 subscribers and if we reach that point we will be giving away an autographed mitch hanniger card so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already look there it is on the screen if you're watching us right now and if you're just listening to the audio version take it from me it's a great card you definitely want to enter all you have to do is subscribe to our youtube channel locked on mariners we have a very show fun uh, fun show planned for you today uh we're going to be talking about ty france finally making the all-star game major league baseball did the right thing but should he actually play in the all-star game we'll let you know our thoughts on that we're also going to be just talking about what our vibes are right now with this team which has now won 14 in a row but there is the looming possibility here that the all-star break could kill the mariners momentum we'll tell you if that is actually something to buy in or not But first, let's look at the Mariners draft class. The 2022 MLB draft is currently underway. Right now, as we're recording this, we're in the seventh round. But we are going to focus on the three players that the Mariners drafted last night on day one of the draft. This is a three-day event, of course, today, rounds three through ten. But last night, it was rounds one through two, including the competitive balance rounds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the Mariners had one pick there. But let's start with their first round pick at number 21 out of North Allegheny in Pennsylvania, Cole Young, shortstop, who is 18, turning 19, which has given some people some pause there because he is a bit older for a prep guy. And that has created a little bit of a disparity here between outlets in terms of where they have ranked Cole Young. Uh, For example, Prospects Live has him or had him 47 entering the draft, whereas MLB pipeline had him 20. Uh, so what are your overall thoughts on Cole, uh, Cole Young, Colby? Cause we didn't talk much about him on this show. No, it was a little bit of a surprising pick, uh, not because he wasn't worthy of, of that pick, but uh, just because, you know, Cooper Sherpy was there and that was the guy who I think we kind of assumed was going to be the Mariners pick. And then as the draft played out, uh, picks 11 through 19 were particularly unkind uh, to the Mariners in that sense. So I just assumed it was going to be Jerpy. Um, but, you know, you see the pick and, and when you get over the initial surprise, I, I think, I think what the Mariners wanted to happen is they wanted Jet Williams to fall to the fall to uh, them, but I believe he went to the Mets. Um, mm. So, you know, I, I think, you know, that you look at Cole Young, uh, the whole 19 thing doesn't, mean anything to me whatsoever i could not care less if he's 19 uh the thing you're buying here is that he's an up the middle bat uh 
probably average at shortstop. He doesn't have a ton of range, but he is, uh, I would say, at least average at short. He'll he'll make the routine plays and all that stuff. Pretty good arm as well. I think ultimately he's going to move to second base. He's a line drive hitter, can put the balls in the gap, uh, You know, makes a ton of contact, doesn't strike out, will draw walks. Uh, he is... The Mariners think that they have some power that they can get out of him, some over the fence power. Um, mm. Six foot one eighty, he's more or less physically tapped. Uh, I think ultimately what he becomes is a above average second baseman who hits in the high two hundreds, uh, two seventy, two eighty, somewhere in that range. Maybe has a couple years where he pops three hundred, uh, probably draws you know ten percent walk rate, and then might have a year or two where he hits fifteen home runs, but. Uh, overall, just a very solid player, and I, I do think the Adam Frazier comp is is a pretty good one. Um, and I know Mariner fans are freaking out about that. Adam Frazier, if you get Adam Frazier out of your first round pick, you've had a very good first round pick. I, I think people underestimate yeah. how good well, especially of a at number twenty one, right? Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. There's no superstars on the board. Yeah. At least, at least not that are clear cut, right? You know, obviously Mike Trout went in that range, uh, of course, but that's a very much an outlier. Um, and ultimately, you know, you're just looking for guys that can uh, contribute, that have projectability, that that you can rely upon to at least be able to work their way through the minors. Something that you can just, you know, because there's no such thing as a sure thing in, in, with any pick in the MLB draft, really. Uh, but you want to try to get as close to that as as possible with your first round selection. And I think this is. They, um, you know, as far as prep guys go, I, I think this is a really nice pick for them. You're talking about a guy that doesn't have a lot of holes in his swing right now. He controls his own very well. Um, you know, walks a lot, doesn't uh, chase. You know, has high contact rates and does have a you know pretty high exit velos that go along with that as well. Which is, I mean, you know, there, there might not be a ton of over the wall power here, but there's certainly he's he's going to be able to uh, rip the balls uh, quite a bit. So, um, you know, he the the big comp on him, as you mentioned, is Adam Frazier. He said that he likens his game to Corey Seager. So maybe something in the middle there, that would be amazing, right? Uh, if, he, if he can tap into a little more power there, that would be uh, pretty pretty nice. Uh, so their second pick is Tyler Locklear, a corner infielder out of VCU. And I'm definitely going to accidentally say Tyler Lockett at some point, whether it's on this show or, or another one in the future. Uh, but Tyler Locklear uh, is a guy that Scott Hunter said projects in a similar fashion to Pete Alonzo. Mets power hitting first baseman. I don't know if I buy that. And of course, this was a little bit of a money saving pick for the Mariners because of what um, what they did with their next pick in the com- competitive balance round B. Uh, but what do you think about Locklear? There's uh, certainly a lot of power here. One of the best power hitters in this draft class for sure. Yeah, um, if it is a money saver, I don't think it's going to be massive. Uh, I, I think you know there were a lot of people who really thought that. Uh, Locklear was kind of surging even into, you know, comp round a territory. So I don't know how much money is going to be saved here. Um, I have concerns. He's you know, listed. They took him as a third baseman. They think he can play third. He's a pretty good athlete. I don't see it. Um, it's very rare that there are this many questions about a guy's ability to stick. And then he actually does stick. Uh, it's, it's highly likely mm-hmm. he'll be a first baseman. Uh, the power is, is elite. It's 40 home run power. Uh, nobody's denying that. Uh, and obviously the, the control to zone numbers are off the charts. I think he walked basically two times as many as he struck out. Uh, yeah, 47 walks to 25 strikeouts this, uh, this yeah, season. So pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close to two to one. So, uh, there's certainly some things to like here, but I do question, uh, I've read that the bat speed isn't great. Um, which is an issue. And, and when you try to sell me on a college performer, uh, in the Atlantic 10, which isn't a great baseball conference, then I'm going to have some questions if there's also bat speed questions. So I don't, I don't love the pick. It's super interesting because if you can get around the, the bat speed issues, or if, you know, he can just find a way to make that work. There are guys who hit without tremendous bat speed. It's, it's not impossible. Uh, and there are guys who hit with power without tremendous bat speed. Not everybody is Julio Rodriguez, but it does limit your upside as a hitter. Um, so I, I think you're looking, this is a, a bat only first baseman and it's going to come down to can he hit, you know, 230 with a 330 on base at least. If he can do that, then he's probably going to be a pretty good first baseman who hits for some power. And you can certainly see why 
Seattle would, would be very interested in that. Um, I just, I, I do question the bat speed here and, and that's not a great sign from a small conference guy, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the Mariners, um, by the way, the Mariners have made a pick and I can't pronounce that name. So, um, (laughs) Ogan Windish, great name, great name. Nice. nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I slated him inside my top 20 Mariners prospects, but he just barely made it. Uh, but this is definitely a guy I'm going to watch for the next year because there is a lot of fun in that bat if he can overcome the bat speed issues. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting pick. Then, again, if it's a money-saving thing as well, if that came into play here, because this was a guy that was ranked around the 100-ish range on uh, both MLB Pipeline and Prospects Live. Uh, but their third-round pick Walter Ford, a right-handed pitcher slash third baseman, one of the youngest prospects in this entire draft. He was a reclass guy from uh, from the 2023 draft into this draft, 17 years old, out of Pace, Florida. And he's already become a little bit of a fan favorite for his nickname and his Twitter game. The nickname, which is also his Twitter uh, handle, the Vanilla Missile. <laughs> and this is a guy that tweets out, that makes and tweets out memes about himself talking trash about the team that he is going to pitch against that same night. And has even gone as far as to create a meme talking trash to the rest of the AL West now that he's been drafted by the Mariners. <laughs> this guy is electric obviously i really wanted drew gilbert to be a mariner that did not happen and unfortunately he's now with the astros but colby i think this is a pretty decent consolation prize if i do say so myself Eh, it's fine i would have preferred luis ramirez who unfortunately is a texas ranger um no this this guy is uh he's kind of a the per the perfect guy you want jerry and company to to draft he's 17 years old i don't think he turns 18 until december um he has got uh lightning you know lightning quick fastball it's up to 97 kind of sat in the low 90s for most of the year but he can touch 97 he gets tremendous extension on the pitch too uh which is is something that you don't really expect uh from you know six foot three guy uh you know it's not like he's logan gilbert and he's six foot eight and he reaches out and touches the catcher uh, but he gets tremendous extension. He's going to be able to max out his arm talent. Uh, and there's still some projectability here. He's only he's six foot three, but he's only about 195. Uh, he can get bigger, stronger. Again, he's only 17. He doesn't turn 18 until December 28th. Um, it's already a plus fastball with some run to it. Uh, slider is kind of projected right now, at least to be his his you know go to secondary pitch. But there's feel for a changeup. He throws strikes. Um, He's a guy who you want the Mariners to get their hands on because, uh, you know, Kyler McDaniel said that he's a he's a big. Uh, he was high on a lot of teams board who use uh, the modeling of like the biomechanics and all that stuff, and the Mariners certainly do that and they do it very well. So you kind of look at what they've done with guys like Michael Morales here, and Ford has a higher upside than Morales. There's a non-zero chance that Walter Ford is pitching at the top of your rotation. Uh, it's just going to take a while because, like I said, he's 17 years old. So mm. long way to go for him, but that is a, a very interesting pick. It is a uh, the Mariners basically getting, I, I would say, I, I think it can be argued that the Mariners got three top 50 talents, although I'm not super high on uh, Tyler Locklear. I almost said Lockett. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not super high on him, but I do. I have seen some people who are actually pretty high on him, and I believe it was even um, it's a Jim Callis who said that he wished he could find a way to get Locklear in his last mock draft in the in the comp round A pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he he clearly buys it to some extent. But uh, yeah, this this wrapped up a pretty good uh, three days, and you know the, the <laughs> we're not going to talk about him today, but the guy the Mariners took fourth is uh, is also uh, very interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Another prep arm. They've been uh, going uh, prep quite a bit here in the early going over the last couple of years. That's uh, definitely a breaking trend there for the Mariners uh, front office. 
It's a very intriguing class. We'll get more into it over the course of this week. Plus, you know, we don't have a lot going on aside from the All Star game. Uh, so we'll we'll have plenty of time to go over these uh, these draftees for the Mariners. Uh, but it's a uh, fun class to be sure. And you know, nickname aside, Walter Ford is just a great baseball name. Just a strong baseball name classic baseball name love it uh and third base is not an option for him it doesn't seem even though that some people do some scouts actually do believe in his hit tool uh there's legit power there uh but the uh he's going to be focusing on on pitching as he should i mean he's reaching 97 miles per hour as a 17 year old that's absolutely ridiculous so the mariners themselves had a very 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 fun day yesterday aside from the draft they won their 14th straight heading into the all-star break nine games over 500 and just nine games behind the astros for the division we're gonna be talking about all that in just a moment but real quick a reminder this episode of locked on mariners is brought to you by blue nile whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment find jewelry as unique as them with the modern convenience of online shopping at blue nile.com blue nile has simple online tools that let you choose the diamond shape, size, and clarity, as well as setting style. Blue Nile's bench jewelers will then handcraft their perfect engagement ring, and each ring will be a one of a kind. Looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24 7, available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Make your moments sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com, and Locked On Mariners listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more more this podcast exclusive includes engagement jewelry as well use promo code locked on that's l-o-c-k-d-o-n plus every order is insured ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside shop stress-free and find your forever peace go to bluenile.com today you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting July 18th, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers over at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts, and on YouTube, just like us. So this uh, this Mariners team just uh, keeps on winning and winning and winning and winning and winning. By the time that the All-Star break is over, Colby, it will have been basically a month since the last time the Mariners lost. <laughs> like almost a month, about a three week, about a three week span. Three weeks. Yeah. yeah and that's uh, it's been a long time. To, to be sure, it's been a very, very long time since this team lost a baseball game. But does this all-star break concern you a little bit? I was on the phone with my dad last night, big Mariner fan. If you've been following me on Twitter, he has some very uh, interesting uh, scouting notes on Mariners players, to say the least. If they do anything positive, they're a ball player. Just they're a ball player. That's it. That's the. Oh, that's cool. all you need to know. Yeah. yeah, that's all you need to know. Uh, shout out to Ty France, a.k.a. Ballplayer23. As uh, as my dad calls him now, uh, but yeah, so my dad my dad is a little concerned about a post All Star break hangover for the Mariners. Thinks that maybe the Mariners are having their momentum interrupted at a most op- inopportune time, and that the win streak is in jeopardy coming out of the All Star break with the Astros awaiting them at T Mobile Park. How do you feel, Colby? Uh, I feel like that's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy because, I mean, the Mariners, um, that what's probably going to stop the Mariners' momentum more than anything is Framber Valdez and, and Justin Verlander. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's I think it's going to be easy to point to it, just like it's easy to point to the brawl and say that's the turning point. And you say, well, you know, actually they were playing really good before that, and people just, they don't care. They want the brawl to be the turning point, so they make it the brawl. Um, I think the other thing uh, that we un- need to understand is after the all-star break, you get, you go, I think 10 of your next 13 are against Houston. Um, and then you have the New York series directly after that. So it's like 13 of your next 20 are against the two best teams in the American league. That's much more likely to stop your momentum than getting f- four days off. Um, and, and frankly, the bullpen needs it anyways, uh, because they have been ridden hard, particularly in the Texas series. They had to cover, I believe it's 14 innings, uh, mm. maybe 15 innings in the Texas series. 
and plus a bullpen game the day before uh, on Mon- or on uh, Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, they, they need the day off. Um, you know, there are guys who are kind of battling through some minor things. JP's finger, Winker's back. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there are just some guys who just need – they need some time. They need some, some rest. And so um, I, I know it's easy to say, well, they stopped playing and then they came back and they lost. So I guess it's because they stopped playing for, you know, half a week that that's why they, they started losing. Uh, but if they do start to lose, it's going to be because they're playing really good teams and they're human. You know, the Mariners can't win 68 games in a row. You know, that that's not going to happen. So they're going to lose at some point. It's not going to have really anything to do with the all-star break. Just like the win streak really didn't have anything to do with the brawl. Could it play a small factor? Sure, it could. But is it the mm. biggest factor? No. Yeah, and also, uh, there's a non-zero chance that you come out of these, this All-Star break even more energized than when you entered it because, I mean, you get the rest, obviously. That feels great to get a few days off. But also, Kyle Lewis might be back for the homestead. Should be. Mm-hmm. So that's really exciting as well. Plus, you get him in time to own Justin Verlander, his son. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I, I think there's a, there's a lot of positives here for the Mariners. We might also get some news on a potential Mitch Hanniger rehab assignment at some point this week. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff going on, a lot of stuff to be energized about, a lot of stuff to be excited about. Plus, you got Julio and Ty at the All-Star Game right now representing the team, representing the organization. Enjoy the next couple days. Let's have some fun with it, and let's get back to business on Friday and and go from there. And I think that they are in a great spot. Yeah, they're going to lose eventually. It might be in the Astros series because that's a very difficult team to face. Uh, Plus, you know, you are going to have to face guys like Justin Verlander. You know, you are going to have to face the Yankees in New York at some point. You know, this there are going to be difficult series. There are going to be unfavorable series for the Mariners still ahead, even though that their strength of schedule is, you know, Pretty, pretty good. good yeah yeah the the next 20 are are the real gauntlet and then mm. if you get through the next 20 at 10 and 10 i think you're making the playoffs because there's a lot of angels kansas city detroit uh left on yeah. your schedule yeah you would have to and i mean let's not put it past the mariners here of course but <laughs> this is a very different different mariners team this is a different team this is a one that is unique to this year alone Uh, what happened in years prior has nothing to do with this team in particular let's be very very clear about that but yeah you know injuries could happen things can just happen right that are out of your control and and it could derail things but you are looking pretty good if you're able to just survive the next as you said 20 or so games uh then you're you're in great shape you're in amazing shape and in the coming weeks you know next two to three weeks you're going to be adding players you're going to be adding pieces both back from injury and via trade and look they are going to trade for someone they are going to trade for something (laughs) let's not have any doubts about that let's not make any question about it let's not even argue about that they are going to trade for something that is going to help them this season and maybe even beyond at least one one player at the very least they're going to add one player to the mix here so yeah, there's uh, there's a lot to be excited about with this team. I mean, th- they're in as good of a position as they could possibly be at this point in the year, especially considering the way that things started. And uh, just, you know, looking back on years past, and I've said this before on, on, on this show and on our Patreon show that, you know, when you look at 2014, 2016, 2018, the years that they were able to make it pretty much to the finish line, but just fell just that, that much short. At the All-Star break, when they were thriving, especially in 2018, when they were, God, I don't even remember it, but they were in a really good spot in 2018 in the All-Star break, and then it just kind of fell apart because they didn't have the farm system to go out and add the pieces, nor the financial flexibility to go out and add pieces that would help them that year. Now they have both of those things at their disposal and then some. And so, yeah, there's a real opportunity here for the Mariners to not only get better, but significantly better in the coming weeks. So there's a, uh, and no, that does not mean Juan Soto. And yes, we are probably going to talk about that at some point later this week. And no, our answer is not going to be something that a lot of you will like. Sorry. But <laughs> the, uh, the, not. the Mariners are, yeah, they're they're not they're not they're not trading for for Juan Soto, but they are going to be able to add both 
with guys coming from uh, from injury, uh, coming back from injury, and both on the uh, on the trade market as well. So that, along with just the general good vibes that are going on in a clubhouse, I mean, these guys look like they're having a ton of fun out on the field just every time that they go out and play. Uh, so it's yeah, I mean, it's good vibes all around. You got to feel great about where the Mariners are right now. They're they're set up to have a lot of success over the over the next couple months. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm ready for the ride. Are you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> very very excited about that aren't you colby <laughs> yes <laughs> so as i mentioned ty france is finally in the all-star game major league baseball did the right thing it took them way too long for them to do the right thing but they did the right thing finally uh no pats on the back for them however but should ty france actually play in the game considering the injury that he's coming off of. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Uh, Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts. And yes, I realized that I said the NHL playoffs. Someone needs to address that in the ad copy anyway that is uh that is not my domain there so <laughs> so colby we got ty france in the all-star game finally after jd martinez came in as a replacement after Corey seager came in as a replacement ty france is replacing mike trout on the roster which i mean you, you got to have a little fun with that if you're a mariners fan uh there's just a little extra something something there to uh, chuckle about yeah exactly yep yep of course of course uh so you know, Luis arises on this roster, and of course he's listed as a first baseman, but he can play multiple other positions. Miguel Cabrera is on this roster for legacy reasons. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is the starter at first base. So there should be an opportunity, at least for France, to get in this game at, at some point somewhere, uh, either DH, first base, what have you. But do you think he should actually play in this game considering that he is coming off a pretty serious injury he has looked good uh, he did look good down in texas over the last couple games uh, had a big home run in yesterday's win uh but yeah how do you feel about this do you feel a little worried about him getting into this game i would prefer he didn't play um but i would also prefer julio didn't play or even participate in the derby because uh, I don't want guys getting hurt for absolutely meaningless things. And, and you know, the all-star game is not meaningless to Ty France, who's a Southern California guy. It's not meaningless to Julio, who's a 21-year-old rookie. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's meaningless. So um, mm-hmm. I would prefer they didn't play. But uh, also, I don't think that's the Mariners' decision. Julio is certainly going to play and, in fact, should be the starting center fielder. But I guess, you know, give it to the guy who's inferior in every way to Julio Rodriguez, except for home runs. I guess that's fine. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would be a lot more um, worried if France hadn't gone, what, eight for 20 with a home run and three doubles in the Texas series. Um, mm. And he's starting to look like he's getting his timing back. He insists that the elbow is not a problem. I don't know how much I believe It looked that, like a problem in Washington. <laughs> it did. It did. And, and uh, it didn't really seem to – he was fine in Texas. He looked like old Ty France. So mm-hmm. um, tough to say, but I would prefer he didn't play. But if he wants to, then he should. Um, yeah. And, you know, it'll be interesting to be – can't wait for Luis Arias to enter the game at second base, um, which is where he should mm-hmm. have been made the team at anyways. Mm-hmm. Um because then I can, you know, oh, yeah, Luis Arise, first baseman, had to make the team. Hmm, interesting. Um, but, yeah, I would prefer France didn't play. Um, I would prefer Julio not try to steal a base um, or throw out his back trying to hit home runs tonight. Um, because, ultimately, I don't care if my team does well, if, if the American League does well in the All-Star game. I don't care if my, my guy wins MVP. It'll be cool if Julio won it. Sure, I don't care, but. I'd rather they not get hurt. So that's just me not being a big all-star guy. I'm just, I'm not, I, I don't care. Um, so yeah, of course I'm going to say no thanks. I'd, I'd rather you guys didn't participate, but 
of course they're going to participate. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and at the so, end of the day, right? Like you said, it's it's all it's up to Ty. If he wants to play, if he feels good enough to play, then he should play. It, it's he mm-hmm. got this honor. He deserves to do whatever he wants with it. Right. And we're probably talking one at bat and maybe yeah. two or three innings like, in the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're not. Yeah. It's not like he's going. And it's out also tonight. possible he's he's the DH tonight as well in the, in the second. Yeah, at half some of the point. Game. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. At the end of the day, like it. it it's up to him. It's up to Julio what he wants to do with with his All Star bid, etc. You know they earned that. You know they put the work in this this season to earn that right, and uh, and yeah, it's up to them whatever they want to do, and it's up to you know the manager as well, Dusty Baker, to uh, to handle that, and uh, we'll, we'll see what he does with all of that because it's you know it's of course Dusty who does who said that he hasn't even seen Shane McClanahan pitch. That's. I, I don't know, man. If you, man to retire. Ugh. I don't know, man. If if you're a manager of an entire league's team in the All Star game, you might want to be familiar with every single player that is on that team. Just saying. And if you haven't familiarized yourself with Shane McClanahan, you should. He was my Cy Young pick this uh, this off season, and. Uh, I was doming with that. <laughs> I was do- <laughs> that was that was a big galaxy brain prediction there by uh, by old tight end Gonzalez. I feel good about that one. Gonna gonna by give myself way. a pat on the back there for that one. Yeah. Let me know if you want me to call the ambulance for your broken elbow. <laughs> um, also, by the way, we're we're gonna run here, but uh, how dumb is it that Clayton Kershaw is getting the start over Sandy Alcantara? <laughs> that's when did that's when dumb. did Alcantara last pitch? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Alcantara should be the starter. <laughs> yeah, like we have to give it to Clayton. What is this the the All Star game for the for the retirement home? Oh, we have to give Clayton Kershaw a star. We have to get Albert Pujols and M- Miguel Cabrera in the game. What is the, what is this nonsense? Jesus, this, this <clears throat> reminds me very much of that NBA All Star game a couple of years ago where they they just shoehorn Dwayne Wade and Dirk Nowitzki into it. <laughs> it's like gotta have these guys in gotta send these guys off like you know kershaw i mean kershaw's been good this year don't get me wrong oh, like, he's been way better yes. he's been way better than than albert Pujols or miguel cabrera yeah. have for their respective respective teams he but, absolutely yeah. deserves to be in the play or in, in the all-star game and most years i wouldn't care if he was a starter um and it makes yeah. sense because they're in la yeah Alcantara's just been better. Like Dude, so much San, better. Sandy, Sandy Alcantara has been ridiculous. Dude, the he's guy, the best like, pitcher in baseball right now. He's he's and he's been doing all that while well, pitching. I think the most innings in all of baseball yeah. this year. Like that's like yeah. he he's checks got, like, every 15, single box. I think he's got like 15 more innings than the number two guy, and it's Robbie Ray. Like it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. Again, I'm not a big all star all star game guy. <laughs> All right, so so knowing that, knowing that you're not a big All Star Game guy or home run derby guy, before we hop off here, I want a prediction. What is Julio hitting in the first round tonight? Seven. Oh Ten. God, you th- <laughs> hundred. Don't 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 uh, Robinson can know him. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. If he beats Seager, then he's got to go up against uh... Alonzo or Acuna. Yeah, I'm just asking for the first round. Just first round. What do you think he's going to uh, hit? Uh, hmm. is it the? So, it's, it's three minutes, right? It's timed. Four, four minutes, four minutes. Oh, okay. Uh... So he hit. So Divish confirmed that he hit thirty-seven in a trial run yesterday down in uh, in Arlington <laughs> in four minutes. Well, I wouldn't put it past him, but uh, I'm going to go seventeen. You're going to go seventeen. No, no, no. I'm going to go. I'll go. 21 all right so i'm actually pretty close to you so you know accounting for globe life park and it being inside and the dimensions are obviously different and everything i don't know if he's actually going to hit 37 down in an open air stadium uh with the dimensions of dodger stadium but i'll say he hits 24 and he beats seager but i don't think he'll beat because Alon- I, I think Alonzo will beat Acuna because Alonzo is just like built for this. Like he's just a, he's a derby merchant basically. So much. yeah. So uh, his entire swing is built to win home run derbies. Yeah. So 
I don't know if he'll be able to beat Alonzo, but I think I think Julio is going to put on a show tonight. I, I think we're actually going to see some fun out of Julio tonight. I'm I'm excited to watch it. I, I haven't watched a derby in full in a very long time. I'm going to do it tonight. Why not? Julio is awesome. Julio is a lot of fun. I want to see him put on a show. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, so that's going to do it for our show tonight. Uh, but let us know in the comments below how many you think Julio is going to hit if you're watching us on YouTube right now. Uh, but that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Tidy Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow Inside the Mariners at Inside Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. It's D-A-N-E G-N-Z-L-Z. And Colby at CPAT11. That's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And again, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. And you you can enter yourself into the Mitch Hanniger card giveaway. And thank you again for making us your first listen of the day, just like you do here every single day. Now make your second listen of the day locked on MLB prospects. And boy, it's going to be pretty busy over the next few days there for MLB prospects and host Lindsey Crosby, who's a prospect encyclopedia who's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts just like us. And with that, have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.